Hear the words of the Colic for the 18th Sunday after Trinity. Lord, we beseech thee, grant thy people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow thee, the only God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The collect for today is a warning and a prayer for God's people to avoid becoming ensnared in the things of this world. Now we might wonder why it is that the collects and so much of Holy Writ in general constantly talks about this topic. I mean, after all, we are the redeemed of God and we should already know this truth, right? We don't need to worry about it, do we? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding yes, we do. And the example that I want to give you is that of Demas. It is our warning. It is what we might become if we're not paying attention. But first we must understand who Demas was, who he might have become, and lastly, what he actually became. So, who is Demas? Well, he is mentioned three times in Holy Writ, and the first time we hear of him is in Paul's letter to Philemon. It seems that Demas was with Paul uh, during his two-year imprisonment in Caesarea. And he wrote in Philemon 123 and 24, where he closes with this saying, There salute thee, Ephrathos, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Aristarchus, Demas, Lucas, and my fellow laborers. Now, he seems to be in pretty good company. I mean, especially when you're talking about the Christian faith. And it seems that Demas also followed Paul to Rome and was with him during his two-year imprisonment there. And we read this in Colossians 4.14. Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. However, there's one more mention of Demas in Holy Writ, and this is the warning that I am talking about. It's a warning to every person who says that they are a follower of Jesus Christ. And Paul, writing towards the end of his imprisonment in Rome, writes in 2 Timothy 4, verses 10 and 11, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Caesarns to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. This man was a close associate of Paul, just as Luke was. He had a first-hand knowledge of the trials and tribulations of what it costs to be a follower of Christ. He heard all the preachings and warnings of Paul to the faithful. And yet, for all of this, he did not listen. We do not hear any more of Demas, but the warning is there for all of us to read. And this brings me to the second point. Who could Demas have become? Well, we know that Luke, again a close associate of Paul, went on to write the Gospel of Luke, which is also referred to sometimes under certain circumstances as the Gospel according to Paul because it contained much of Pauline's theology. We know that Luke has his day in the calendar of Christian saints, which is coming up on October 18th. And there is no day for Demas. Now, it is possible that we could have had another sub-apostolic father of the church in Demas. But the love of this world seems to have had him forego any honor in the church and possibly in eternity itself. And the third point that follows from this failure on his part is what did he become? Now, if I had to pick a modern example of what I think became of Demas, I would have, unfortunately, many, many to choose from. For example, Jim Jones, James Baker, John Spong, 
Bishop Pike, I could go on. Unfortunately, as I said, too many to choose from. These men, as well as Demas, lost sight of their goal of being a follower of Christ. For incrementally over time, Jesus became not something that was to be emulated and to be one of service to others, but be of service to self. Now, these people did not just wake up one morning and say, well, okay, today I'm going to be a heretic. No. What happened to them is they made one compromise at a time, incrementally, until one day they would realize that something in the world was more important than following Jesus Christ. Now when Paul uses the phrase, lover loves this world, he is not referring to an appreciation of the world, its beauty, its abundant life, its people. For the Bible teaches us to care for God's creation, because it is His. The word that Paul uses here for love is a form of the verb agape, which of course normally refers to the love that God has to His people, to you and I. The love that we are supposed to have back to God and to each other. In other words, Demas had perverted the love of the Creator and His people into the love of self and the created. We have many warnings in the Gospel of John where he warns us of this happening. He must constantly make us aware of this misplaced love that we could have. Here are a few examples. John 1.10 he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. We've heard those words before. John 7.7 7, The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. John 8.23 And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. John 16.33 these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now I could go on with these quotes from John and other writings. Yet the warning is the same. Beware of the incremental compromising of our faith. If we are not constantly aware of how the world is trying to pervert us and subvert us, one day we will wake up and find that we are totally outside the will of God. That is, of course, if we wake up at all before Judgment Day. And the real tragedy of this is that by that time we may not even care. And that's the real tragedy of Demas and for all the rest. They no longer care for their Creator. This is the same warning for those who think that they do not need our Lord to lead them. Again, returning to the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 39 and 41. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, the day which see might not see, and the day which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now you say, We see, wherefore your sin remaineth. We must always be on our guard for the small compromises that the world, the flesh, and the devil would have us make in our faith, just so we can get along without too much trouble, or persecution, or conflict or being called nasty names. Let us from time to time ask ourselves the question, am I Demas? And if the answer to that is in any way yes, let us turn to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and repent 
and seek the abundant mercy which he is always willing to give all who will ask him of him. Nothing is beyond Christ's redemption. Even Demas, if he would have turned and asked for forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.